We're going to be in the book of Genesis today, chapter 3. That'll be an easy one to find. Book of Genesis, chapter 3. We're going to look at the first 70 verses. We're going to be in many other scriptures, but that's going to be where we're camping at. Uh, book of Genesis, chapter 3, verses 1 to 7. Shouldn't take long to get there. All right. I don't hear any pages rustling. If you're there, say amen. Amen. All right. Let's see what God's Word has to say to us this morning. It says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will, you will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband, and with her he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, that they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Now we're in week five of the sermon series, which we wrapped up in a couple weeks, uh, the domino effect, because we know one thing causes another. One thing causes another. I don't care what you're doing, good, bad, indifferent, one thing causes another. What I find is a big part in life, of life, is just knowing the difference at times. Sometimes just knowing the difference makes, makes all the difference. First thing is first. We've got to make sure something first. We have to realize that not everything is good for you. Amen. Just because something might be legal for you to do so, doesn't mean it's necessarily the best thing for you. I can go out as an adult and do a lot of things in this world. I don't mean they're good for me, though. They're going to destroy me sooner or later. But what happens is we tend to believe the lies that the world feeds us instead. By doing this, parts of our lives have become an illusion, really. Whether we believe the lies the world feeds us, or we believe that the truth that the God gives us is going to change our life. And how we look, it changes how we think. You know, whether we decide to believe that lie or whether we believe the truth that God gives us, it's going to change everything. And how you proceed in life. I find that most of us live in a pattern, if you will. There's a pattern to our life. Now, there's, sometimes that pattern changes, but most of the time, before we do anything, good, bad, or whatever it may be, for usually the first thing we do is think about it. It usually comes to mind, whether it's an idea or whatever it may be. Something we think about it first, then we usually proceed, we act on it, uh, we live it out, usually, once we thought it, one way or the other. Whether it's good or bad or whatever, we usually live it out. Then it's shown in our behavior as we live it out. It's a process, no matter how we go about things. But you know what? Believing a lie is nothing new. We see it from the very beginning in the book of Genesis. Right from the, right from the very beginning. So believing lies has been around a long time. The serpent, just as it is with today, he can quote scripture. There's a lot of people who don't quote scripture, but just as with Satan, they will twist it and manipulate it in the process. And it sounds good. So be very careful who you hear preaching, teaching, whatever it may be, God's word, and who, all these uh, theologians, be very careful where you get your information from. Amen. Because it can sound so enticing, it can sound so good, and it tickles our ears because, you know what, that's just what I needed to hear. But it might not be what you needed to do. There's a lot of things we want to hear, but they're not always the truth. They might, might make us feel good. And Christianity is not about making you uh, feel bad. God is about giving you the truth, and then you have to deal with it. Because sometimes I needed to be given the truth, and that, you know what? And God did that in a loving way, and I had to deal with it. There's some things I had to deal with. He didn't tell me what I needed to hear. He told me what was best for me. Because he had a plan and a purpose for me. Unlike the devil, he has a plan and a purpose too, but unlike, it's not the same result. 
There's a big difference. You have to know the difference between the truth and the illusion. You have to know the difference between the truth and the lie. Just because something tickles our ears and it sounds good to us and makes you feel good. That's what I wanted to hear. But it's not what you've really needed. It's not what you're really needing. You know what? Sometimes I hear, you know, uh, people talk about sin like it's something brand new. You know, like it just happened the last few years. Sin's been around an awful long time, right? right. Been around an awful long time. I don't care how old you are. If you look at the book of Genesis, uh, sin has been around since the book of Genesis, since the fall of man. That's been a long time. I know some of you are a little bit older than I am, but I don't think any of you are that old. <laughs> Not quite, I don't think. That's, that's quite a while. Now, you know, when I, when I think about when they, they act like sin is just brand new today and all the things happening, you know, I think about in the garden, the sin that happened. I think about in Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember, remember the angels that came down to Lot? What were them men in that town going to do to those angels? They were going to do some kind of perversion, some kind of sexual molestation against angels. Heaven help us. So sin is not brand new. So it's not brand new. The only thing that I can see that's different between sin today and sin of old is sin walks down the street nowadays. Amen. It walks right down Main Street. It is loud and proud. And it doesn't care. It wants everybody to know it. And if you think any different than they do, there's something wrong with you. How dare you stand in judgment of me? I'm not standing in judgment of you. I just got a different opinion. That's all. Just because I don't agree with their opinion doesn't mean I'm standing in judgment of them. I just happen to think what you're doing wrong is all. That's all. It, you know what? I'm not, I'm not standing in judgment of you in any way. There's nothing wrong. I'm telling you, stand strong in the Lord. Amen. Stand strong and do the right thing even when it's not popular. You might be the only one doing it. That doesn't mean it's wrong. You know, uh, there's a lot of things that were popular in this world. It's not going to get you where you want to be. You see, at the end of days, you won't stand before any of those people. You'll stand before God and you'll stand before Him alone one day. So don't worry about what people have to say about you. You wouldn't want to know what they say about you anyway. There's a lot of things that God is doing in the process of this world, even among all this sin. You know, there's good out here. You just don't hear about it. There's sometimes, uh, as Christians, we need a reality check at times. There are some people, now you've probably met some of the same people. There are some Christians out here, and I've met them through the years. They, they think that they are so strong and so mature in the Lord that they can never fall. Heaven help you if you're thinking that way. I don't care how strong and how mature you are. Every day it's a process. Every day it's a journey. Every day is a different day. You might be doing real good today, but what about tomorrow? You've got to be strong in the Lord every day. No one is so strong that they can't fall. If you're, if you're thinking is that, you need to change the way you think. No one is that mature. Let me say this about that. Now think, think about it in this context. If Satan could talk one-third of the angels out of heaven, what could he talk you into? Ain't nobody that strong. Nobody is so strong that they couldn't fall. Nobody is so strong that they couldn't sin. If he can talk one-third of the angels out of heaven, what could he possibly talk you into? Mm -hmm. Be careful. We get our strength from the Lord. Amen. We get our strength from the Lord. When you try to have that strength in and of yourself, it, you ain't going to make it. Right. Now, when I was looking at the scriptures this week that, that from the passage in the book of Genesis, now, we know, we, it's a very familiar story. My gosh, everybody's probably heard of that, whether they're Christian or not, about the Adam and Eve and the fall and the, the fruit. And, oh, just for reference, during my sermon, we're going to say the fruit was an apple, okay? <laughs> Don't nobody throw nothing at me. I know it says fruit, but well, I'm going to say apple for the sermon, okay? All right. Now, a lot is made of Eve giving into the temptation. Now, can you imagine that when all this was happening, you know, because Eve is the first one that, uh, fell to the temptation. You know, Adam and Paul say, Lord, that woman you gave me, she's the one that talked me into it. I, it wasn't my idea. I, I just didn't want to deal with it. So I just gave into her. Lord, that woman, you gave her to me. Now, let me just say, a lot's made of Eve giving into temptation. Now, rightly so. I perfectly understand. But let's look at it from a different view for a minute. Just for a moment. Look at it this way. Who was Eve taken down by? 
Satan himself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Satan himself, the servant. That was Satan himself. She got taken down by the evil one himself. Okay. Now, let's look at it this way. Who was Adam taken down by? Okay, all right, that's the correct answer, but I'm looking at it a little bit different. That is correct. What am I thinking about that? Who was Adam taken down by? A naked woman with an apple. <laughs> a naked woman with an apple. Come on, where my men at? Come on, where my men at? Come on, what does that say about us, guys? At least Eve got taken down by Satan himself. We get taken down by a naked woman with an apple. I ain't going <laughs> Help us, guys. We need some help. Lord, help us. So, so next time you really let the Eve have it and say, think about it. I think she got taken down by Satan. Yeah, heaven help us. Yeah, a naked woman with an apple is all it took, guys. <laughs> now the rest of the sermon you'll never remember, right? <laughs> but that's all it took, guys. Heaven help us. Yeah, don't leave me out there by myself, guys. <laughs> Let me say this. When you buy into deception, you're never going to be better for it. How is it that you, maybe you've been lowered off the path? Maybe you didn't realize you'd even gotten there. Sometimes you stray from the Lord and maybe there's things going on in your life and you don't even know how you got there. You're just there. You're not sure how you arrived, but you know what? Something's wrong inside and something has to be changed. Your spirit is not right in you and you know it. There's something that needs to be changed. Sometimes it starts simply by an idea. I really believe when uh, Satan fell from heaven with one-third of the angels, it probably started out with an idea. Somebody wanted me to be elevated up to God's level. We know who that was. Somehow, when I was thinking about it, the angels must have thought that God was holding out on them. He's not letting us reach our full potential. He's not letting us reach all that, 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 that is out there. He's holding out on us. We're going to do this for ourselves. I'll tell you, it didn't work out for them too well. They wanted something that they couldn't handle. When on the path of life, you must know the difference between what is real and what is an illusion. They had believed the lie. The angels themselves had believed the lie. Heaven help us. If, 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 like I say, if he could, uh, Satan can talk one-third of the angels out of heaven, what can he uh, talk us into? Jesus himself had a lot to say about a lot of these things. Now, I'm going to touch on something. I'm going to spend just a few minutes here, I'm, I'm maybe five minutes or so on this. But it's something, it's too in-depth to go in all of it, but I'm, I'm, so I'm going to brush it with a broad stroke here and go over it. There's something called a, the New Age Movement. There's nothing new about it. It's been around since the Garden of Eden. There's nothing new about it. I find most New Age people, and if you ask most people that believe in these New Age beliefs, they, they wouldn't really think they were New Age. They probably think they're something else. They're just trying to reach a higher spiritual level, you know, somehow. What I find about most New Age believers that I've talked to this is my opinion now. I think that they think they are too hip, too cool, and too sophisticated to tie themselves to the thinking of Christianity. You know, they, they're probably thinking there has to be more. They, there must be more, something more to believe in. God has fulfilled us. God has completed the story. There is nothing more. God has completed the story. They're trying to add something. They're trying to... Uh, Ask for something that they can't handle. Be careful what you ask for. The new age is based on concepts that actually sound irresistible. They sound terrific. You know what I mean? Oh, man, really? Oh, man, that's, that's great. But like Eve, see, she listened to all that stuff that Satan was saying. It sounded enticing. It sounded so, it sounds so great. But like today, what they hear today is a lot of them, they hear the spiels of these modern gurus. And they begin to think the faith of their fathers was too rigid. It was too narrow. There's possibly no way. That, this is too narrow of a way. That God would never impose these irrational limits on me. There, there, there's no way that God would give me this irrational boundary between me and me having a full knowledge of the spiritual realm. God would want me to know all that, surely. There can't be limits. 
You know, sometimes we think too much. Yeah. Now, I know some people out there that could do a little more thinking, <laughs> but I also know that sometimes we think too much. God has already got it planned out for us. He made it very simple. The only we get complicated because we make it complicated. It's not really. It's very simple. What exactly is New Age? Now I can't explain it to a T, and I can't define it to a to a uh, just in a nutshell because it covers so many things. You can't say, okay, a New Age person believes this. Like a Christian, you know exactly what a Christian believes or what they're supposed to believe anyway. But New Age, you can't really put that in a box. Because it's just a vast variety of things. It's really based on self-centeredness and whatever the person wants to do and whatever they believe. So each person, that's going to be a little bit different. So every person that you would talk to, it's going to be a little bit different on that. Well, one of the problems is the New Age people, they do not accept man's problem. The man's, the man's problem is we're separated by, from God by our sin. That's a, there's a separation there. Instead, they believe that each of us has forgotten our own divinity. Yeah, right. Come on. Now, come on. The New Age, now, I love these. I, I, I've talked to these. And they, oh, they don't even realize what they're doing. Therefore, the New Age solution is to seek a higher consciousness. How do they do this? They think they, they, through crystals, through channeling, and spirit guides. All these things. This is garbage. Do not get sucked into that. I have seen some Christians get pulled into that. Somehow, they're trying to, uh, what I find is, some of these Christians are trying to do all this stuff, and they try to combine it with their Christianity to have something better, so they think. Well, there is nothing better, because Jesus Christ died for our sins. There is no higher consciousness you know what I mean? We don't need any of this other garbage. God made it simple for us. God sent His Son on the cross to die for our sins. He made it easy for us. All these other things are garbage and are not going to get you anywhere. But what I find is the people that I talk to, there's no talking to them. They're not listening. They get involved in all these things. I have a relative. She claims she's a witch. I haven't talked to her for a while. Obviously, we don't see eye to eye on things. <laughs> I mean, last time I talked to her, when she told me she was a witch, I said, yeah, I'd go along with it. I'd say you're a witch, you know. <laughs> she didn't like that at all. I probably shouldn't have said that. So, you know, I think that was just Eddie saying that. I can't say, God, give me that. You know, but sometimes, you know what, it just comes out and you get enough of it. But there's, what I find is there's no, there's no talking to these people. You know, you, you just can't seem to, uh, you know, you try to reason with them and things, and you just, it doesn't happen. The New Age, the best way that I can put New Age is this. All right, now I might ask a question here. I know probably most, but not all. Has anybody here besides me, and I know, uh, been to Shady Maple? Woo, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. If you've never been there in, in Pennsylvania, you're missing out. You're missing out. But anyway, that's not the point of the story. Anyway, when you go to that buffet, you know what? When I go there, I have a smile on my face. I get my plate when I go up there. The, I mean, the buffet is probably as long as this church. And uh, when I go up there, the thing about it is, I can get whatever it is I want. And as much as I want. Whatever, you know, it's good, bad, whatever, I can get all of it if I want. But that's kind of like the new age, what they do. It's kind of like a smorgasbord. So everybody's going to be a little bit different. The guy next to me doesn't have the same thing on the plate that I do. But they go up there, and they just, like, spiritualize, and they just pick and choose what they want, makes them feel good, and whatever, what, you know, what sounds good, and they just put it on their plate. That's kind of what new age is. So everybody's going to be a little bit different. Whatever it may be, it's a smorgasbord. It's a wide variety of things. It... Really, when I go to that smorgasbord, that's a self-centeredness. <laughs> it's all about me and what I want on that plate. That's self-centeredness. That's the same thing and the same concept with these New Age believers. They get whatever it is that they want. It's about self-centeredness. You know, all these things, these diverse practices to try to reach God, there are not many ways to heaven. There, are one, there is one way to heaven. One way. He said, how do you know this, Pastor? The Bible tells me so. Jesus said it himself. What did Jesus say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
There is one way to heaven. There are not many ways. People say, oh, you know, we're all going to be in heaven one day. No, we won't. They haven't read the scriptures, of us, obviously. I don't know what they're reading, but it's not the scriptures. It's not God's holy word. There is one way to heaven. These Easter, New Age is considered something called Eastern practices. You can't blend your Christianity to produce something better. They say believing that all paths lead to God. All paths don't lead to God. That's right. There's only one path. They, they say Christians are intolerant and narrow-minded. If that's the worst thing I'm ever called the rest of my life, I'll have, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, I've been called a whole lot worse than that. I'm sure you have too. Yeah, so I can handle intolerant and narrow-minded. But when people call me these certain names, I, you know, I like to go to God's Word. God's Word says this in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 13. It says, enter the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the path that leads to destruction. It says many will enter through it, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to light. At the very end, I love what it says, and only a few will find it. So when they call me narrow-minded, I take that as, the, as an honor. You know what? Because you know what? It's not always going to be popular. It's not always going to be feel like you're doing the right thing. And sometimes you may be questioning yourself, and you say, "I don't know." You know what? I know these people are pretty smart that I've been talking to. So you know, maybe it doesn't matter. I know some very smart people that have said some very dumb things. Amen. Just because somebody's very smart doesn't mean anything. I go with God's word every time. It's absolute truth, and it's going to be at, it's always right. I might not always understand it. I might misinterpret it at times. But, but God is always right. In the end, He's always right. The New Agers actually hold Jesus in high regard. But they say there's no evil in the world. That's what they say. They say there's no evil. So they don't need Jesus as Savior. If there's no evil, what do I need to be saved from? They say He was a spiritual teacher and a guru. He was much more than that. So much more than that. He was the Son of God who died for our sins. Many will study and study the words that Jesus spoke, but they will put a different spin on them. You can't grab a verse out of the Scripture and say, well, see, Pastor, here it is. I got my proof text. See, you were wrong. See, it says right there. Well, they've taken that one verse and make it say anything. That's what a lot of these groups nowadays say. They take that one verse. See, you're wrong there. No, you ain't reading all of it. You're reading what you want. There's more to it than just taking one verse. You got to read the scriptures as a whole. Jesus said in the book of John, chapter 10, verse 10, he says the thief does not come except to steal and destroy and to kill. I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus wants to give us a rich and satisfying life. Praise the Lord for that. That is not what Satan's plan is for you, I assure you. Rich and satisfying life, I'll take that. I'll take that every time. Book of John, chapter 8, verse 32 says, You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Amen. Jesus not only came for forgiveness of sins, but to set us free as well. That is good news to me. Praise the Lord for that. Being set free and living free, that's a wonderful thing. My life is so much different now than before I was saved. I like meeting people, you know, when people uh, didn't, didn't know me before. They said, I heard this about you. I was like, yeah, there's a lot of stuff you might have heard about me. And probably some of it's true. <laughs> probably a lot of it's true. Not all of it. Sometimes, you know, but sometimes you hear things. I take that as an honor because of the work that God is doing in my life. Mm -hmm. If they can't see that old in me, what I think that I used to do. You know what? God is speaking into our lives because he see it, wants to see our lives change. I don't care how mature you are. I, you know, all these things. God still has a work for you. There's things that he's trying to move you forward in. There, there's a process to it. I don't always understand it, and I don't always see it, but I know God is still working. He is still, he's, he never stops. Even when I'm sleeping, God is still working. A lie that I hear often is this. Pastor, I can't make a difference. I have no talent, gifts, or skills of any type that God could possibly use. No, I know this. Most people that I meet, regardless of where they're at in life, they want their life to count for something. 
They want their life to have purpose and meaning. I don't want to be at the end of my days and know that I just wasted all my time doing nothing foolishness. I want my life to have purpose and meaning. I, I, I want God to be able to do something with me regardless of what I have to offer. I want him to do something with me. You say, well, how do I do that? In the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 16, it says this. Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You say, well, how do I do that in the everyday things? We wait for something big to happen. i got to do something big for the Lord. Well, praise the Lord when those things do come up. But a lot of times, you know what? It's the everyday things. Mm -hmm. I don't struggle with the big things. I struggle with the everyday things. Yes. You know what? I don't struggle on Sundays. I struggle on Mondays. Mm -hmm. it's, a lot, it's, it's easy to praise God on Sunday, but how about on Monday when it's not going so well? Yeah. We want to do something big for God, but yet we won't be found faithful in the mundane things, the everyday things, the things we get tired. I'm bored with this. God says, one more time. One more time. Well, what, what, what is one more time? One more time. I don't know. until the end of your days. Whenever that is. Now, I jotted down a few things. There's three things that we shouldn't do. We, the, the three, the, there's th I call them the three don'ts. The three things we... Uh, three don'ts when waiting, when our, our, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Three don'ts. Somebody want to read this from me? <laughs> <laughs> three don'ts when, uh, when wanting to make a difference. There you go, I got it. Three don'ts when, when wanting to make a difference. The first thing is, don't wait for an audience. Don't wait for an audience. If you can't be trusted with one, why would God trust you with a hundred? That's right. If you can't be trusted with one, don't wait for an audience. Not everybody's going to see everything you do, except your heavenly Father, which is the only one that matters anyway. Mm -hmm. Sometimes nobody's going to see the things that you do. I seen, uh, I seen a, uh, something on Facebook one time. I, 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 I would have printed it out. I didn't even think about it. It just came to my mind. There was this little boy... He was playing a flute, there was nobody around. He was sitting on the sidewalk, and they, he, while he was playing this flute, he was an awful small boy, so I'm sure it was probably pretty out of tune. But there was this cat sitting there watching him. You know, and the cat was mesmerized by him, you know, watching him. You know what? You know, it doesn't matter the size of your audience. Keep up the good work. Keep up the good work, no matter the size of your audience. We think we have to wait till we have a thousand people they see us. We actually should be serving an audience of one, and that one is God. It doesn't matter who else sees us. It doesn't matter who else knows our name. Audience of one. Secondly, you don't have to be asked to make a difference. In other words, don't wait to be picked. You know why? Because God already picked you. Don't wait to be picked. God already picked you. You don't have to ask for permission to make a difference in this world. To be picked. Thirdly, don't discount the power of God's love. At times, Jesus had multitudes come to him. You ever see that? He says multitude. He said, how many is in a multitude? I don't know. It's, different. it's a lot. It's a lot of people. But something, as I read the scriptures many times where Jesus was, the multitudes came to him, and this is just me reading into it. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. But I noticed they all seemed to feel a certain way when they came to Jesus in those multitudes. And what I saw was this in those multitudes. Jesus, did you see me? Jesus, did you see what I'm going through? Jesus, did you see, have you forgotten me? I assure you, Jesus saw you. Jesus knows what you're going through. Jesus seen everything about, knows everything about you. Yes, Jesus is concerned about you. He, and he cares for you. Those multitudes were looking for something that only could be fulfilled by God. There's times in life, there's other people that may say kind words and things, but there's some things only God can do. God is going to meet you where you're at. The reality of things is that you're so burdened down with things at times that you forget who you belong to. You start focusing on all the, all the other stuff. 
I know it's been one thing after another. It seems like there's always another mountain to climb. You say, I just got over this, now this. It seems like, you know, it's just like dominoes. I'm not, you know, born over, but here comes another one at me. But your faith must be stronger than your doubt. Your doubt is going to get the best of you at times, but you can't stay down. Just remember what God did for you and that He has a plan and a purpose and meaning for your life. We all have our mountains to climb. But without God, how far will we really get? You've got to remember, and I'm speaking from personal experience, one bad idea usually leads to another. Yeah. It ain't no fun. When we put our focus on anything but God, it's never going to work out. I don't know where your focus at is on in life right now and, and what, you, what you got going on that feels so overwhelming, but I assure you God sees you. He has not forgotten you. At no time, 